Welcome to 10 Minute KQL. Whether you're a technology pro looking to master the Kusto query language or new to the world of IT and looking to learn your first language, 10 Minute KQL is a place to level up your skills. This is the sixth session in the Kusto query language beginner series. This series is intended to take you from a level with minimal technical experience to writing your first basic queries using the KQL language. These short 10 minute sessions will teach you KQL, allow you to get hands-on practice in a lab environment, and provide some homework to practice after the session. In the last session, we introduced has, contains, starts with, and ends with to help filter our queries. In today's session, we'll learn distinct, count, and learn how to sort results. If you find value in these videos, please hit the like button. And if you want to receive notifications of new videos, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. When we type a query and get results, they might not always be represented in a way that we need in order to make sense of the output data set. One way to put order to a query results is to select a field of importance and sort by that field. The results can be placed in alphabetical order, numerical order, or time-based order, depending on what type of information is in the field you've selected. In our practice query, we're taking data from the help cluster, security logs database, and process events table. First, we filter down the results a little, so we find all processes of Excel.exe that are running. This gives us 30 records to review. As we look at all the field options, host name looks interesting, which identifies the name of each device in the network that ran the Excel.exe process. Let's sort the host name field next. When we sort by host name and select ASC for ascending, we can see the records are now out of time order, but they're in alphanumeric order based on the field that we selected. We see that numbers are ordered first and then letters are next. If we change ASC to DESC for descending, we see the order is reversed. If we remove either ASC or DESC, the default setting is to place the information in a descending order. Lastly, if we switch the field to timestamp, we see that by default it orders descending, with the earliest records last and the latest or most recent records first. If we sort by parent process name, we see that capital letters are sorted first, then lowercase letters second. We can also sort by more than one field. If we place a comment after the first field and then add process hash as a second field and run the query, we see that there are no changes to the parent process field order. But when there are duplicates in that field, the process hash field is then ordered first by numbers and second by letters. When the next unique value in the parent process name starts, the ordering in the process hash starts again in alphabetical order. Instead of sort by, you can also use order by. They're the same thing. So if you're transitioning from the SQL language, this may be easier to remember. As we scroll down the output data set, we can see all the unique values in the parent process name field. If our data set was in the thousands of records, this wouldn't be feasible. If our goal was just to see what unique values there were. The distinct operator can help us find the unique values in any field. Distinct can quickly identify the information we need, and we can also simply comment out the line after we found the information so that we can continue building our query. Just like sort by where we added in a second field, we can do the same with distinct. When we add a second field to distinct, it only displays the records where both fields are unique. In this case, each process is unique, so all 30 records are displayed. If you use distinct on a field and get an error back, it may be because of the data type in the field. We'll dive more into data types and how to manipulate them later in the intermediate series. When looking at a new table for the first time, 
both take and distinct can be used together to identify what type of information the table contains. In this example, let's take our first look at the Security Logs database and the Employees table. Since we don't know exactly what's in the table, let's first take 10 records as a sample. We see the Role field, and we see some duplicates. Let's identify all the unique roles in the company by using Distinct. We can see there are 12 distinct roles. This may be useful in helping us to write our next query. In this case, let's identify all of the IT associates. We see there are 143 IT associates in the company. Now let's sort the IT associates by name. The last operator we'll learn today is count. If we only want to know how many records or instances of an event there are, count can help. In this case, there are 143 records with the role name of IT associate in the dataset. If this is the only question we needed to answer, we could have quickly gotten the information we needed by adding one more line in the count operator. Most of the datasets we've worked with so far have been pretty small in size, relatively speaking. Some datasets are very large and can be millions of records. In this case, if we're just starting out our filtering process, there may be too much information available to pull the results, and it can either take a long time or fail completely. Count is helpful in this case before running queries on a new data set to get a sense of how much data is involved. As an example, let's take a look at a new data set that shows information on taxi rides in New York City. If we simply place the data set we're interested in on the first line and use count on the second line, it tells us the size of the data set we're working with. We can then take a sample of the data set and begin to write our query with many filters so it doesn't time out on the large amount of data available. There are more ways to use count as a function that we'll learn in the intermediate series. Let's do one more exercise with distinct count and sort. We're starting with a help cluster, Contoso sales database, and sales table. Since we haven't worked with this data set before, let's start by taking a sample of 10 records. We see that there's a country field, and now we want to know which countries customers live in that buy our products. We can add a distinct country line. Next, let's sort the countries and states alphabetically. Lastly, let's identify how many countries there are on the list. We see there are 55 unique combinations of countries and states. So to find out just the number of countries, we can comment out line 3 and comment out the comma and state from line 2, then add count on line 4. This gets us just the answer we want, which is 6 countries. If we were going to save this query, or use it longer than just to get this quick answer, we can clean it up by removing the commented out sections if we chose to. For this week's homework assignment, use the Help Cluster, Security Logs Database, and Employees Table. Sort the table first by role, then second by name, in alphabetical order from A to Z. Post your query in the comments section of this video to see if your query produces the correct answer. In the next video in the beginner series, we'll learn how to work with numbers, and we'll learn how to display only the fields that we're interested in using the project operator. We'll learn to reorder the fields and make our results show just the information we want to see. If you find value in these videos, please support the channel by hitting the like button, and if you want to receive notifications of new videos, hit the subscribe button with the notification bell.